All right, we are doing a video on redistribution. Redistribution is how we get routing protocols to talk to each other. And in this picture, what we have set up right here, you guys can follow along when you pull up the file, is that we have one, two, three, four routers. Router three is running in the EIGRP area, router two is running in OSPF, and router one is running in RIP. Router zero is our central router, and this router is actually going to translate between all these different protocols. We can see here that the interfaces on router 0 is where each protocol is going to run on separately. EIGRP is not running in the green area. RIP is not running in the blue area, and so forth. Router 0 is only going to be set up to have these routing protocols run on this exact interface for each section. Router 0 is then going to translate or redistribute these routing protocols to talk into the other areas. And that's what we're going to set up. So let's go straight to router 0. On router 0, the first thing we want to look at doing is we want to get some of these serial links up and running. So router 0 is like brand new out of the box. Hop into config T, put a host name of router 0 on it. What we're going to go into next is let's just go on the console line and we're going to do logging synchronous. We just don't want to get bumped in terms of our status messages popping up from things changing, which things will be changing. And now we're ready to configure. First thing we want to do, let's set up our interfaces on the left towards EIGRP. So interface serial 000 going towards EIGRP. And we're going to choose the high side of addresses on router 0. So IP address 10.0.255.2 is the high side. And now we just need to put our subnet mask on there. 252, 252. No shot will bring the interface online. I'm using a bandwidth of 8192 on these links. The clock rate is on the other side. We don't have to worry about that. And our serial comes up. After we get our interface up, now we have to set up EIGRP on this link. So we're going to do router EIGRP. And we're in AS12, so let's identify it as 12. No auto summary to kill any automatic summarization. And followed by our network statements of what we're directly connected to. And that's our serial link. And once we type that in, we get an adjacency that gets formed. So now we actually have a neighbor relationship with our partner. Also, that means we should have an EIGRP route coming in from our remote route over here. And we see it right here. So our routing table is being built now with EIGRP inside of it. The next interface we're going to have to do, let me just scooch this over. The next interface we're going to set up is going to be for our OSPF area. For our OSPF area, we have to go into another interface, and that's going to be interface 0001. IP address on this, we're taking the high side again, 172.20.255.2. Put our mask on there. Do a no shut. Now keep in mind, we are clocking on this side. So let's set up a clock rate of 64,000. Don't forget our bandwidth, 8192 is what we're going with on this router. And we're done with this serial. What we need to do next, we need to set up EIGR, I'm sorry, we're setting up OSPF here. We're running area 0, the local number doesn't matter. We're going to put a network in for what we're directly connected to. Area 0. And now we should have an OSPF neighbor coming up on this link. OSF is turned on. We're identifying the link that we just configured. And here we are. Jo OSPF adjacency was formed. Neighbors 2.2.2.2. I am router 0, so I'm just going to go into my OSPF mode. And I'm going to give myself a router ID of 100, 100, 100, 100, because I'm special and really big. So I just do a save on my router. We'll play with the router ID later. Next, we need to do the other side, and this is going to be the RIP section. So I'm just rearrange my windows here. Hmm, running out of space. Okay, here we are. So for the RIP section, we're going to be looking at 0010. So let's hop on that interface. Interface 0010. And we're going to take the high side again for an IP address. IP address 192.168.255.2. Put in our mask. 
doing no shut to bring that online. The other side is clocking. So all we have to worry about is our bandwidth of 8192. And we are good to go on that. Now we need to set up rip. And to set up rip is just router rip version 2. We're going to kill automatic summarization. And we identify our network. And the network we're attached to is 255.0. No masks are put in with RIP. RIP is just takes the default class full. When I'm doing this, it applies it to whatever interface matches that. We're talking about the 2550 network. We have RIP up and running. Unlike OSPF, we do not going to have any adjacencies formed. But if we do look at our routing table, we do have a RIP route coming through, 44.0. That is showing up. So we are working successfully here. Question of the day. What type of route is this route via this is this is an ultimate route what type of route is this route this is a parent route what type of route is this this is a child route remember that stuff if you don't take a quick review before you take the final exam but parent routes child routes level one routes level two routes ultimate routes default routes network routes, supernet routes. If you have any questions on those type of routes, come see me and I'll take care of it with you. But fun times. So what we have right here now, just perchance, on the core router, it has a route for every single remote network, for the EHRP remote one, for the OSPF, and for the RIP network. We have routes for every single one of these remote networks that exist. That's exactly what we want. But the problem is, if we actually try to ping from inside RIP to another domain, it's not going to work. And you're like, well, why isn't it working? Well, let's go on router one's perspective. Router one is the RIP router inside of the RIP domain. Show IP route. All it knows is it just knows what's on it. It only knows what's happening in the RIP area. So he knows these two routes. He doesn't know about these other areas. So we're going to start this redistribution process because we want each router to know about all networks. And redistribution is always done on the core router in the middle. So from router 0, what we're going to do next is this. We're going to hop into each routing mode. And for ease of use, let's do RIP first. Hop into router RIP. And what we want to do is we want to redistribute and take the other routing protocols and put them inside of RIP. It's almost like you get something in FedEx. You have a FedEx box. But you know what? you want to send the FedEx box, you want to put that through the UPS mail. So you take the FedEx box and you put it inside of the UPS system, and now your FedEx info is going through UPS. It's just like that. RIP, we're inside of RIP right now, but we want to put EIGRP and OSPF into RIP and share that through RIP. The command to do that is redistribute. After that, you pick the protocol we want. Let's do OSPF first. And this is where you have to choose that ID number that locally significant one, that was 10. Next thing we want to define, RIP uses the metric of hop count. OSPF uses bandwidth. They're not going to understand each other. So because we're inside of RIP, we want to type in metric and the number of hops that we can go. When you're going to OSPF, you can only go one hop in, because one layer three device. So we're going to pull in things with a metric of one. Same with EIGRP. EIGRP will have one hop in, but we're looking at EIGRP 12. So let's change this statement from OSPF to EIGRP 12 with a metric of one again. This is going to pull in both of those different routing protocols into RIP. And let's see if it worked. So one out of three redistributions done. Let's see if it worked. Pull up our RIP router again show IP route and check this out. We have 10 networks from EIGRP coming in. We have 172 networks from OSPF coming in and check out the AD. The AD is all 120 which is RIP because we're taking those networks and putting them into the RIP protocol. This is really cool. So router 1 can now ping outbound but the problem is you're like well it's gonna work now. Mm, it's not gonna work. Your packets are getting to those other areas but the problem is the other areas don't know how to get back yet. So next, let's do OSPF. Router 0 again, the core router, and let's set up OSPF. 
router OSPF 10. And just like rip, the command is redistribute. But this time what we have to do is we're on OSPF. We want to pull in rip. We want to pull in EIGRP. So redistribute rip. We don't have to identify a version 2 or anything like that because version 2 is a modifier. And that's something that's an on-off switch inside of rip. So we don't need to identify that actually here. So we're going to redistribute rip. And we have a couple options. Now remember, OSPF understands bandwidth. So when we're redistributing, we're like, well, don't we need to identify it? With OSPF, you really don't need to identify it. It's kind of interesting. OSPF is a jack-of-all-trades protocol. When you get to CCMP, you go into identifying bandwidth, but for the CCNA, CCNA level, excuse me, you only have to do redistribute RIP, but you have to use the keyword subnets. What the keyword subnets does, remember, OSPF is one of the only protocols that's not based on classful but RIP and EHRP are based on classful subnetting. That's where they were made. They do a classful routing protocol. So we use the keyword subnets to make sure it pulls in all the classless subnets that have been configured. This will pull in all the networks, whether they're classful or classless, whether it's a supernet or whether it's just a normal network route, it'll pull all of them. And we do the exact same thing again to pull in all the EIGRP 12 routes. We use that subnets keyword. And now when we take a look, our router 2 in OSPF, this router should be getting those routes. Show IP route, and here we are. Look at this, the 10 network coming in from EIGRP, and we have our 192 coming from RIP. And again, look at the administrative distance. All OSPS, but it does identify them as external routes coming from an external source. RIP didn't do that. RIP doesn't actually identify it. But OSPF does identify, hey, I learned this through an external means, but these are the routes I've learned. Now the cool thing, if router 1 wants to ping router 2 in OSPF, the ping will work. It goes into the core router, the router translates it across, goes to router 2, comes back, and they can actually talk now through different routing protocols. Last but not least, we just set up EIGRP, back on that core router again, last section. EIGRP is going to be the hardest to configure. Hop into EIGRP, we're in 12. And here, it's redistribute just like before. But the reason this is rough is right here. With EIGRP, we have two bandwidths that are used by default, and that's bandwidth and delay. But there's overall what we call 5K values. So when we redistribute and do our EIGRP, which understands 5K values, which are five different types of metrics, we have to proceed with the following. Let's do RIP first. Redistribute RIP, followed by the word metric to pick out our metrics, just like we would have done with RIP. But instead of hop count, we have to identify these five things. First one is bandwidth. When you don't know what to type in, the default bandwidth that is suggested is your lowest speed. If you don't know what your lowest speed is, the default bandwidth they suggest is 10,000. One, two, three. Next is delay. If you know your delay, you type it in for how long it takes your packets to get across. If you don't know your delay, they suggest one of two, either 10 microseconds or 100 if you think you have a slower network. After your delay, next comes reliability. Suggest you put 255, it means your network is reliable, the links are staying up, you don't have problems with links going down. Next one after reliability is going to be load. Load, of course, is how heavy is the traffic being used on your links? Are your links being saturated or are they mostly open? One means not much load. So 10,100, 2551. After load, we have something called MTU. And MTU is your maximum transmission unit. The default recommended for that is 1,500. So if you don't know what numbers to use in your network, which a lot of people don't, these are the defaults that are recommended. Again, the delay we see usually 100 or you'll see 10. It depends on how fast and speedy your network will be. We do the exact same command again now, and we're going to do it for OSPF. OSPF 10. And now what we should see happening, if we go to our EIGRP domain, which is our EIGRP 12, router 3, pull up our routing table, and check this out. EIGRP is one of the smartest of the others if you just think about administrative distance. But what you see here, your 172 is again from OSPF, 
your 192s from RIP. But check out the administrator distance. That's not the default for EIGRP. All the other routing protocols kept their own administrative distance. OSPFs always showed 110s, RIP showed 120s. But look at EIGRP. EIGRP's default is 90. These are coming across as 170s, and this is kind of cool. EIGRP understands that when something gets put into its routing protocol through redistribution, it's considered an external route because it's coming from an external source. But it tags it and says, you know what? I'm taking your route, but I don't like it as much as I like my own 90 ones. So I'm going to mark these as 170s. So if I have any competition, I'm using my 90 routes, but your 170s, they will be considered. And that's kind of neat because it's almost like it's, it's there, it's going to use it. But just in case, I'll make it a little higher so it'll be more of a backup than a primary if there's another route to deal with. And that's it. All we can do now is just play with pings. And everybody likes to ping. Who doesn't like to ping? So we can ping from router 1. Beautiful. It goes to EIGRP. Ping from OSPF to EIGRP. And the packets can now flow through the translating router 0 in the middle that our redistribution is performed on. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or call me or stop at my office, and we'll go through this further. Thank you for watching, and I hope it has been helpful.